good evening to all the speakers a hey, good evening to all the speakers and the host present today and also the viewers who are watching live and will be watching in the recorded version uh without uh, we have wasted uh, a lot of time like 4 minutes as we were facing some internet issues so we don't want to take any more time from you guys so let's start our today's cme the part 2 of the previous 58 and also this is the live 58 version so enjoy good evening sir and good evening, good evening to all our respected viewers and uh, we had been very honored and proud to have and host our 51st cme online live in youtube and we have uh, with us tonight our uh, co-host and tonight's uh, uh, the main the host our respected president dr devnarayan kalyani uh, so with your permission uh, can we start today's uh, sure. cme sure sure starting uh, thank you sir and uh, with all our esteemed viewers who had been uh, with us for last so many uh, years for last few years today's topic is homeopathy by 2030 and part 2 in part 1 we had lot of very very important discussions done by our respected speakers the same panel of uh, panelists are here available tonight and tonight to add with that we have our beloved deputy medical superintendent and senior uh, doctor from national institute of homeopathy dr pralay sharma to inaugurate tonight's program and he will be there as one of the panelists over to you dr pralay uh thank you so much dr vidyut dr vidyut mukherji uh good evening to all of you and uh, this is my privilege to uh, inaugurate a uh, 51st of uh, cme organized by national institute of homeopathy alumni association uh in today's webinar in cme program we have uh, with us dr chaturbhuja nayak uh he is ex director general of uh, ccrh we also have with us dr ishwara dash ex director national institute of homeopathy we also have dr shamir kumar bhattacharjo ex director of national institute of homeopathy and we also have today uh, dr rajat chattopadhyay uh, present principal of uh, the kolkata homeopathy medical college and of course we have with us dr mukherjee as well as dr kollani it's my privilege once again to uh, uh, announce that uh, we are organizing this uh, cme for last uh, uh, couple of years and today we have stepped to 51st of uh, cme program i believe that the viewer will love to listen to this uh, nowadays uh, this platform has become very powerful program to uh, contribute in the health sector as you all know that this our national institute of homeopathy uh, alumni association a very strong organization by now we have 2700 of member uh, in this platform i believe uh, this seminar will go uh, very well and uh, uh, wish uh, all the best handing over the microphone to dr kallani sir thank you so much uh, good evening thank you pralay good evening everybody and special thanks and our to dr s k bhattacharya dr ishwar das professor dr chatur bhujnai three gigantic player of the country in homeopathic field and at the same time dr rajesh chattopadhyay principal of the traditional homeopathy medical college i think the oldest college in asia not only asia maybe in the world also we are really really very grateful by getting this all four pillars 
and say at the same time dr prolya sharma representing nursing so homeopathy from hospital side we will we have learned in the last cme a lot and many proposal beautiful proposals has been put forward we will try to convey this informations to higher authorities to policy makers up to our level best uh, because we are very much happy and got many things with the expectation of getting further informations further suggestions and further future plans we requested our senior brothers they have agreed kindly they have come before us so definitely we'll get something very serious and very important things for our development we thank to everybody viewers speakers panelists inaugurator prolay everybody let us start the program and may i request professor dr chotupuj nayak first to speak about research please sir uh, my dear co speakers uh, dr das uh, dr hotacharya dr rajat organizers dr bidyut dr kalyani dr prala and i must compliment the efforts of the organizers to arrange this second webinar on the same topic and i have requested dr bidyut to give me chance uh, first because I, i have some very urgent personal work i have to leave earlier so i requested him to give me chance first i am thankful to him to arrange this and uh, uh, my my topic my area is to speak about the homeopathic research by 2030 so not only 30 but also in future what what is the what are the challenges before us and how to face those challenges and whatever we have done to meet those challenges in the past and how to continue those uh, efforts in the future that also we have to discuss and in the during my last uh, presentation i forgot to because due, maybe due to time constraints i could not cover that one important study which was done in brazil in 2010 on uh, plant model on plant model the objective was to evaluate the effect of alumina and calcarea carp 6c and 12c on germination and growth of radical of lettuce seeds the variables uh, evaluated were germination speed index and radical length the results showed there was significant difference in germination speed index and radical length between the samples who, uh, which were treated with homeopathic medicines uh, alumina and calcarea carp and the and the controls and this article was published in a very uh, peer reviewed journal uh, international journal that is international high dilution research in 2010 second thing second thing on the basis of this background on plant studies plant studies because to eliminate plant placebo effect we have to also give more focus on uh, plant studies animal trials also then uh, further uh, research studies are required on the plant models to uh, uh, to assess the effects of homeopathic medicines on the growth of the plants both uh, on the roots and on growth of the roots and shoots second is the flowering time third is production of the uh, uh, crops and fourth is on plant pathogens effects of uh, homeopathic medicines on plant pathogens the second area is uh, i forgot to mention last time how to manage the iotrogenic diseases how to manage the iotrogenic diseases it is a fact that the uh, the uh, adverse effects of the adverse effects of uh, uh, con conventional medicines uh, causing iotrogenic disease uh, this menace is increasing steadily and now we the researcher we have to be, have, we have to find out how to deal with such menace whether by prescribing antidote or by prescribing the similimum on the basis of the totality or by the totopathic drugs in potentized form so these are the two aspects i forgot to mention last time so i thought it is pertinent uh, to Uh, cover those two areas that's another thing after the last seminar something has happened something has happened which has come in the uh, in that 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 is quite relevant to the today's discussion and that will have some impact on today's discussion also and for future research that is one article has been published in a famous peer reviewed journal in a peer, famous peer reviewed journal that is called curious that is published this month june 2022 with the title dangerous placebo during covid 19 pandemic 
series of homeopathic arsenic album induced liver injury. Then the uh, authors, mostly from Kerala, most of the authors are from Kerala, and this uh, uh, they have published. Uh, sorry, this journal is published from Kerala, and uh, uh, they have mentioned that how uh, arsenic album potentized arsenic album, which was uh, uh, which was advised by the government of India to use as prophylactic against COVID-19, caused liver injury. Since Curious is a PubMed indexed peer-reviewed journal, any article published in this journal will definitely uh, have some will have some uh, serious impact on the minds of the uh, scientific community um, who who are determined who are and some of the as you know some of the pharmaceuticals and other allopathic some of the allopathic people are also uh, determined to malign uh, homeopathy so this will give them food to further strengthen their stand that for that reason the scientific advisory committee scientific advisory board of the ccrh sat day for yesterday and uh, they seriously and thoroughly went through the contents of the contents of the article and lapses of the article number one was the article was a peer reviewed journal and the article was published in a peer reviewed index journal you will be you will be surprised to know only within four days which is definitely a very small, very small time to publish an article, including review, review and publication that took only four days, which is quite uh, surprising. And uh, uh, second thing, the article was a case series of only three cases. So they told it as a case series, but they gave the data of only three cases uh, with uh, but which medical, uh, which medical histories, which revealed that all of them took arsenic 30 as prophylactic against COVID-19 against the advisory of uh, uh, Ministry of Ayush. There was serious violation, serious violation of the advisory of uh, Ministry of Ayush against uh, uh, while taking um, uh, the arsenic album 30 as prophylactic. And most of them, all three of them uh, took uh, arsenic for a long period and the patient, the first patient, he had comorbidity. He had comorbidity like diabetes mellitus and liver cirrhosis for which he was taking allopathic medicines also. And the hair and nail samples of the patient and his family members showed high toxicity uh, of the uh, in the hair and the nails. Uh, there was high toxic arsenic high toxicity which is unlikely to be produced by highly diluted homeopathic arsenic. In the second patient the symptoms which were developed after taking arsenic album were not mentioned. Secondly, arsenic analysis of the hairs and nails of that particular patient was not done. And third patient developed cholestatic jaundice after taking arsenic album 30. But the causes of cholestatic jaundice, all of you know, can be other causes like biliary atresia, cholelectal cyst, the common bile duct stone, and the parasitic infections of the bile duct, these were not ruled out. And patient, and another interesting thing, patient was taking arsenic album from two different samples, which tested batch to batch variation, which uh, due to poor manufacturing practice. So this may be due to poor uh, quality of the medicine, some adverse effects might have occurred. And lastly, there is a serious discrepancy in the conclusion of the article itself, which was highly contradictory. The first inference in the article conclusion was all ultra diluted homeopathic remedy was ineffective. Ultra diluted homeopathic remedy was ineffective. The authors concluded. And the second inference was second inference was medicine was safe. On the other hand, they're telling medicine was safe for use due to absence of any active compound beyond 12 put 12 potents. 12C potents. So both the things are contradictory. One thing, the one aspect, on the one hand, they're telling the medicine was is not effective. And on the other hand, they're telling the medicine is safe because safe beyond 12C potency. That means the authors are also admitting. And considering all these aspects, the SAB uh, took some resolutions. What Dr. Kaldani also told that we can move to uh, some Ministry of IUS on different issues also. And here, the same thing, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the scientific advisory board 
uh, made a resolution, some resolution, is, uh, that number one was a strong rejoinder against the article highlighting the misleading data on safety and toxicity of arsenic album 30 should be prepared by CCRH and sent to the Ministry of IUS with supporting research studies in in vitro and in vivo models. Second thing, Ministry of IUS should write to the editor of the journal about number one, hasty review of the article. Second thing, serious violation of the advisor of the Ministry of IUS for use of arsenic album 30 as prophylactic against the COVID-19, which might have produced toxic effects. Third, 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 result, third thing, the presence of confounding factors, including comorbidities and use of homeopathic and allopathic medicine simultaneously. Next thing is contradictory conclusions in the article regarding safety and efficacy of homeopathic ultra high dilution. And the last request was made, last request was made, not request, eh? it, the, the uh, SAB urged upon the editor of the journal that the last resolution was editor of the journal should be urged to retract the article, to retract the article in view of the serious lapses. So this, uh, the purpose of giving citing this article, it is a warning for all of us to be very much alert about, against the malicious propaganda, against the pharmaceuticals, against other, uh, uh, some of the, some, the few uh, uh, scientists uh, from other streams with uh, vested interest against uh, homeopathy in future, we have to very much alert and uh, wherever required, we have to highlight, wherever there is some attack in future, we have to highlight through print media, uh, um, um, electronic media, and draw, immediately draw the attention of the Ministry of IUS and the policymakers. So this is all about uh, uh, to supplement today uh, about uh, uh, this uh, uh, vision for uh, homeopathy by 2030 or in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Really, we are very much thankful to you for your information. Sir, one query has come from the viewers. Uh, so we, so we are requesting you to give some focus or suggestion. Students want to get further confidence regarding homeopathy and their researches. So can we not arrange or propose something by which the research outputs of CCRH and other organizations like NIH and other organizations, those who are working in country, out of the country, which can reach to the student easily by which the students can get inspiration that homeopathy is progressing very fast. What is your suggestion, sir? Please. Yes. So now uh, there are some uh, schemes of the there are some schemes of Minister of Ayush which are implemented through uh, CCRH like uh, uh, STSH uh, scheme for undergraduate students, then MD for MD students, MD scholarship that is uh, uh, given on the basis of the quality of the dissertations also. So uh, the undergraduate student through STSH scheme, the undergraduate students uh, they are being encouraged. They are being encouraged to take up research studies and uh, um, so that they will be encouraged to, and they can publish the, their uh, um, outcomes in the journals. Because once they get funds from the government of India, definitely that will add credibility, credibility to their uh, studies and uh, it will definitely have credence during uh, publication of the article. So after the publication of the articles, uh, it will definitely add to their career growth, career growth and also for the for their future, uh, for they can also contribute to the profession. Second thing, how it can be materialized? How it can be materialized? Uh, the students are the students when they are students, they can also tie up with their uh, with their teachers, with their HOD, with their other faculty to apply for different grants. There are some uh, schemes of the government of India. Um, one is for uh, CME program, CME program through the uh, Rashtriya Ayurveda Vidyapit. They can apply to the Ministry of IUS for grants and uh, whether NIH or CCRH or even individual college level, individual college level, they can uh, they can uh, apply and uh, it may be for two days, three days or six days program. They can invite, uh, they can take suppose, uh, I'm suggesting one good topic for them that is on research methodology and biostatistics. If they take up this, to this, to this topic, they will be definitely uh, um, appraised about the different facets of uh, research methodology, how to conduct, how to develop a protocol, how to uh, 
design and conduct clinical trials what are the different types of study designs so and uh, coming to biostatistics also the, there are so many experts of uh, biostatistics from uh, ems and other uh, organizations so we have done those things in the type of semi program uh, through ccrh and through nih also so this thing that, that this can be done second thing there is also an, another project called extramural research project under extramural research project also the students can be involved with the can be involved with the uh, senior faculty members they can apply to the government of india for extramural research project and that scheme will be that scheme will be forwarded their projects will be forwarded to the ccrs for comments and after getting the comments of the ccrs the ministry of ayush will take a final uh, decision so uh, this is a very good thing very good thing that those who are interested to do research they can do they can do at their level through their hod through at their college level uh, and they can suggest they can do it in uh, in vitro model laboratory model and uh, in vivo model also animal model and uh, plant model also this can be done thank you sir okay, okay. thank you very much another query sir uh, can the students have any archive, common archives of ccrh or national institute or ayush by which they can easily uh, uh, easily consult a specific subject on which research has been already done is there any archive existing uh, yes, uh, yes in the website in the website of the ccrh but i am not sure about nih so they must have uploaded in the ccrh website if you go through that they, they have already uploaded all these uh, most of the recent studies most of the past studies past studies their abstracts also and if they request the ccrh if uh, some studies are not there if some studies are not but i am confident probably but most i am confident uh, that uh, abstracts of all the past studies have been uploaded and they can access easily access they can easily access thank you sir thank you very much for all the viewers you can easily any one of you you can easily access what the research has been done in ccrh and other institutions no if they, if they want further if they want further clarification if they have some doubt suppose there is only okay. one abstract or suppose there is only in some cases only abstracts are there and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they want further clarification so they can request the dg uh, for for giving the for uh, um, uh, sharing the full articles definitely they will do okay sir thank you very much a great information for all of us thank you sir we are really grateful for providing us your valuable time many many thanks and near future we will expect your presence for our encouragement okay thank you Lots but but i am but i am but i am requesting you uh, please be yeah, being from this uh, association please uh, take some immediate steps immediate steps for do, doing doing research uh, more research from the nh forum from the nh platform there should be more research oh, oh. because okay, nh sir. is the only, only organization where there is chance for uh, integration of uh, edu education research and practice so and uh, there are a lot of uh, huge raw materials huge raw materials so Definitely. those raw materials must be properly used that's why i was suggesting that uh, dr uh, director of nh should be present here uh, uh, to give his opinion on this future uh, prospect uh, of uh, future strategy of nh uh, by 2030 anyway um, he is absent okay, we'll, from region we will try we will request him to come once and uh, through dr prola sharma we can convey the, your suggestion to director definitely yes. nih is a core of brilliant scholars every year brilliant scholars brilliant scholars students. teachers are brilliant patient, students are brilliant literatures and brains are easily available in nih the best place for research thank you sir we will definitely will request and convey this seminar to director definitely and specially uh, separately we'll talk to him thank you very much now Uh, may i request dr dr Ch chatterjee rajesh chatterjee he is present now okay okay thank you rajesh so i request dr Pro principal dr professor dr rajesh chatterjee for giving his further views on teaching in homeopathy which are very much recently which are, we are feeling that is becoming weak and confidence of students are definitely reducing to some extent which needs to be more uh, increased and more very confidently they should progress for the future so regarding research proposals or suggestion in 2030 professor chatterjee will speak to dr chatterjee please good evening uh, good evening dr kolani uh, my senior uh, professors are here 
a nice presentation by Dr. Nayak. We have gone through uh, this. And again, uh, it is uh, one good attempt from our alumni association, National Institute of Homeopathy Alumni Association uh, for the cause of the profession. And the topic, it is part two. First, in the first part, we have extensively uh, talked about uh, the uh, what 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 is the lacking we have now regarding the institutional teaching, regarding the students' approach, attitude of the faculties, etc. Now it is the second part because uh, the organizers uh, thought that uh, only one uh, two hours time will may not be sufficient for the vision two zero three zero. So before going to the what my uh, anchor, Dr. Uh, Kolani, uh, requested me to go for the institutional part. She also mentioned about the research concept, the research part. So I just uh, catching the tune of my previous speaker, very senior, my esteemed professor, XTG, uh, professor and Dr. Chaturbhuj Nayak, sir. Uh, he uh, mentioned about one paper regarding the arsenic and the use of arsenic, the toxicity, which uh, is very much demoralizing, which may demoralize the students or uh, may deviate the students. Even the it may convey the wrong message to the society, which should not be because if you go through the deeper study or if you go through the all pages, then it may appear that uh, it is it is not that what is in the headlines that um, arsenic album uh, prove fatal to few cases because it was not applied as per direction of the ministry. And in most of the cases, we have also observed this type of uh, this type of application, which is not which was not as per direction of ministry in all the states. But mostly, mostly it was uh, it was applied as per direction. So I think these type of studies, which is just within very few days. Uh, published in the peer review journal. So these type of study should not come to defame homeopathic system of medicine. So I must mention one study for this. I must acknowledge one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Dr. Shubhavai Ghosh. The, uh, he, is very, he has very keen interest on this on the research and the very latest one. And he said we just one day back and I, will, I have gone through. Uh, this, this is only the first June issue, Journal of Integrated Medicine 2022. First June issue when when uh, we have observed the one good study, very uh, wonderful study of Thuja with in mother tincture and twin, uh, not only in mother tincture, uh, also in other uh, form uh, to just to see the action of the Thuja in uh, anti-cancerous activities and it is not the old study. So this type of study, I I must say this this type of study will uh, boost up the moral of the students uh, in which even even the four four researchers it is from calcutta university you can see the papers in the googles in the uh, research papers which is published just in first june 2022 and in which the uh, anti-cancerous property of the thuja is proven through the four female uh, scientists so it was a it, this 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 type of uh, uh, study can boost up the moral of the young stars our would be doctors. Uh, so whenever one type of study can defame homeopathy or few, again few study it is not not done by any homeopath, but definitely they have taken the help of any homeopath. But with the uh, all scientists and in the botany field, they did a good one, a good one. Very little work, but very fast one with the apoptosis, uh, apoptosis uh, the anti-cancerous activities of the thuja. We know about, we have applied it in very many form with the symptom similarity, but in cellular level, in molecular level, they have found they are with this in uh, thuja in uh, mother tincture form. So whatever may be. Uh, now the institutional part, uh, just like the previous one, I must say that uh, the study, uh, whatever is it is, we know about the theoretical part, but right now everything is available in the uh, mobile phone, in the smartphone, in the laptop, and everything from anatomy, physiology to practice of medicine. Each one, even if we can categorize that which is uh, for the advanced students, 
which is i can remember in our time the book it was uh, for advanced students it was in the last part with very black small right, written and most of the average students they didn't touch the advanced part they considered that this was for the advanced students so this type of things was in the book but right now right now it is available from you you, you can choose it like uh, you know the one type of uh, under us uh, under ugc that is you can choose your topic of examination this is uh, cb uh, this is the choice based credit system so, uh, cbcs choice based credit system it is not still not in all state in all colleges in all universities but i think a uh, few universities and few colleges already they have adopted even in homeopathy and there was strong pressure from uh, ministry also a few years back just to uh, introduce it in homeopathy that one student can think of the examination of giving anatomy whenever he think that he is capable of doing good in that subject he will choose his subject choice based credit system and it is not that within first year he has to complete everything or within second year he has to complete the pathology forensic uh, metro organ so this type of choice based credit system it is depending on the student's choice so the part which was in the previous time during our time or even just uh, even still prevailing in most of the university that is on policy makers choice or uh, teachers choice faculty choice administration's choice principal's choice management choice but uh, the now the education system all over the world is going through the student choice the student the learner choice the teaching learning process the faculties they are also should be a learner the uh, students they are learner but the learning process should go peri peso with the students teachers researchers practitioners everything even uh, it is very common in uh, developed country but it is not so common in our uh, uh, in our country in uh, even in homeopathy it is not it is very uncommon that one good practitioner is called is invited for his good speech for the applications of homeopathy that is whatever the student is going from the anatomy physiology or preclinical topic to the clinical topics of repatriation up to the final year even the internship period uh, with the studentship of internship then one good practitioner the successful practitioners not only good practitioners are successful the applying uh, approach his approach of delivering his skill in homeopathy he may be invited uh, for this purpose it is not that uh, he is not within this university it is very common in developed country anyone can be invited for this so in homeopathy it it also we can think of because approaches are different and all approaches we are well aware whenever it is theoretical even the theoretical approaches also are very much confined to five six types but whenever it is in applied form it may be in multiple and with uh, permutation combination it may be so what how what is the successful the key point uh, how the physician approach to single individual cases So approach according to uh, cardinal principles of homeopathy, according to clinical medicine, but the approach differs man to man. So this type of uh, technique, the skills, the developing skills during internship period, during final period, the, the final year period, this should be we can should be thought for, we can think for. So not only confined to only faculties because we know few. pre clinical level pre clinical subjects faculties they are very much they have to concentrate on their subjects because nowadays it is so vast even if you think of anatomy or you think of uh, forensic medicine you think of pathology it is now uh, have gone through the molecular levels the genetic levels medicine okay clinical medicine is very vast but it is applicable to physiology also so the pre clinical subjects even anatomy physiology within the 10 months period within the only one year you have within one year you can get only 10 months practically 6 to 7 months period 
this six to seven months period, you have to go through anatomy and physiology for your lifelong time. And it has gone so deep, the longitudinal studies. So the individual faculties, they have to concentrate on their subjects. So it is not obvious, okay, he is homeopath. He has to apply his skill in the OPDs, in the OPDs, in the IPDs. Okay, because most of the, in the colleges, the, all the teachers are now from homeopathic background. But whenever he is a teacher of anatomy or physiology, he should be knowing everything because everything physiology is changing nowadays it is medical physiology nowadays the vital force uh, totality can be explained in the light of physiology how medicine acts for those the uh, how the physiology is updated clinically it is very important part so you cannot think that medicine is everything medicine is depending on the applied physiology medicine is depending on the pathology so what the pathological understanding is so far update and the physiological understanding so far update even the anatomy applied anatomy this is all depending on the clinical medicine and whenever it is depending on the clinical medicine your organ of medicine we know organ on the instrument the literally meaning is instrument it is so so relevant uh, to the literally meanings that how to read medicine how to perceive clinical medicine with the tool of organum the applications of clinical medicine application of your skill or uh, skills so it is so important so update of knowledge is also important if you are not well aware about well not update about all those updates in the anatomy physiology or preclinical subjects then you will not remain update in clinical medicine and whenever you will not remain update in clinical medicine then that organ and third aphorism that what is to be cured in the disease what is to the part of the knowledge of the disease and what is the part of the indications of homeopathic philosophy that you cannot uh, identify being a student very new goods uh, even a good student will not identify they can uh, memorize everything they can uh, be regular in the classes but without the regular practice of applying skills and just observing the various skills from the various uh, authors that's why professors are invited from different different sources even it is not that only from medical field if you have to know your society because we know in the case taking part we have to consider the society. We have to consider the man in his society. So a man from social origin with a sociologist, you can think of a good lecturer, good professor from the sociologist. You can think from all different, different part, even the anthropologist, the knowledge of the human psychology, knowledge of the a good psychiatrist, a good psychologist. So you can think of, we can think of the lectures of these and how individual approaches they are doing to their patient and their skills, what part of their skill can be, uh, we can take in our case taking approach, what will be the benefit of adding all those skills to our case taking part, to our individualized part, this is, these are very important part. So the students should be motivated and students now spoon fed teaching, these are, these are no more. Even the students, very few students are uh, waiting for the teachers that teachers will deliver lecture and they will give the notes and after taking the notes, he will pass the exam. It is not the scenario. Even in these, uh, after the COVID-19, we have gone through the hybrid classes. Now, even uh, within very small, small reasons, the college remain closed, but the class not uh, remain closed. The online classes are going on. So it is the advantage, whatever all the disadvantages of COVID-19, at least we have to admit that these type of, we are very much familiar with now online classes and according to our convenience, I know few of my faculties in the Sunday, today is Sunday, but I, I am sure that with my 30 faculties, at least one or two now is busy in taking classes or extra tutorial type of classes with a group of students because their exam is very nearby. It is very common to all, I, I know. So we are now very much familiar. So the teachers are very much, they can also in these classes, the students remain free to ask any questions. They not feel hesitate that what in the classrooms, which is very common, but in online coaching, apart from the technical errors, the, there are so many advantages. So what I am, uh, I am uh, trying to establish that the students, the students interest, how the students, the growing interest, it is the first factor. So 
the anatomy, physiology, the debate may be going on that the teachers from the modern medicine were maybe a very uh, in comparison to our homeopaths, they may be a better uh, teacher. They may be better faculty in the uh, clinical part, in the uh, allied subjects. But as per if you, if you just ask me, it is my personal opinion that only a good homeopath, only I can I can quote my teacher, Dr. Jawardar, that homeopathy profession and the applications of homeopathy can only do better when the homeopaths will teach the all allied subjects. This is not my, I am, I, it is my experience because I am now in the profession since 1986, 1987, 1987 to 2023. So I am in the profession near about 40 years. I know so many senior professors, Dr. S.K. Bhattacharya is here, Dr. Ishwara Das is here, they are very senior, Dr. Kallani is here, all are senior. But even with my small, this professional uh, uh, field, these 40 years in professional field, I can admit that uh, a students, a good students with uh, inquisitive, with a good sound senses, sound knowledges of homeopathic subject, he can be a very good teacher in allied subjects. Because which part of the allied subject we have to use more, which part of the applied part we have to apply in our homeopathic approach of case taking, which part we do, didn't, or we have we, uh, not require the part, or if we can know it just for the satisfaction of the society, satisfaction for the publication, satisfaction for the patient's benefit. These are what to give importance, what to give not importance. These are the criteria. I think the homeopaths are the best teacher from this angle. Definitely the modern, the allied subjects teachers, they will be very good in their part, but they have very much materialistic concept with this materialistic concept and they are not well aware about the standards of the homeopathic students. They think it is the homeopathic students, I, I have seen exception is there, but they think it is just like nursing courses, very superficial. But if you compare with the modern medicine MBBS part, with our BHMS part, I, 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 am, I feel very proud of my students, my colleagues, that they are at par with the concept. We are lacking in the showing the cases. In the hospitals, we have uh, lacking of few cases. But in very many uh, institutions, like National Institute of Homeopathy, I, we can say, like uh, in Delhi Nehru College or in our Mahesh Patsidia College or at our, now at our college or at National Institute of Homeopathy at Sarada Krishna College of Kannakumari. So many, so many, all over in Uttar Pradesh, I have seen more than 1,000 patients in Uttar Pradesh, one or two Allahabad College. So, so many patients with lot of patients in the OPDs, varieties of patients in the OPDs. It is not that only very uh, common type of people or only geriatric population come to uh, homeopathy or only child population come to homeopathy like mother and child because it is very popular in mother and child uh, due to its uh, calmness, due to its very gentle uh, effort, it's due to very gentle application. So it is very popular to child, uh, mother and child. But it is not that only homeopathy is applicable to mother and child or geriatric population. So many cases. So within 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 all these things, within all these multiple varieties, there are ample scope of a homeopath to show the cases, to teach the students that what part, what part for us, what part is not so many importance. So one part that one homeopath is a good teacher uh, to teach the allied subjects. Definitely, one or two experts must be there. We have uh, we have to uh, build up our hospitals. If you see, if you think of Vision 2030, I must say that if every institute or National Institute of Homeopathy, like any other institute, like our Calcutta Homeopathic Medical College, Mahesh Patsari Homeopathic Medical College, DN the Homeopathic Medical Colleges, like these, even the Metropolitan Homeopathic Medical College, like Private College, Bordhavan Medical College, the Sarada Krishna of Karna Kumari, or many other UP, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. I have seen patients in Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal Government College. So in all these colleges, if we think of build up a good hospital, good hospital and with a good clinical training approach during the internship period, even uh, in West Bengal, a house step ship is prevalent. So house step ship period in West Bengal, can, apart from National Institute of Homeopathy, still it is house step ship is not there. But we can get two years 
after final year internship and house staff ship apart from the house staff ship one year for internship if we get so much emphasis on these internship period for just acquiring the skills domopathic approaches with with the motivations because now they have to do something we have to do it is not that only the one year time pass for the internship period interns are students and interns are assumed to be that they are having the sound knowledge of medicine with the applied anatomy physiology pathology gynae of etc and with the sound knowledge of metra medica very good remembrance in metra medica very good in repertory uh, technical part with the knowledge of organon so they are the best student to uh, teach the, the skills of homeopathy that should be the vision and that's why we have to build a good hospital we have to admit patient ipd is not only meant for uh, the chronic patient everything even for showing that what is the herring's law of cure how herring's law of cure it is in the theory but what is happening in the patient so what is the individuality what is the patient's knee elbow position how the patient is lying in the decubitus the every patient in the decubitus and in the night shift and intern can see the different position just by seeing the different position he can have idea about the metra medica drug and uh, as well as the clinical medicine decubitus concept so this type of thinking even the very i can say uh, cancer like patient or the patient having uh, terminal illness we know the patient is dying the patient will be dying within 6 months patient will be dying within 3 years patient will be dying within 5 years or patient will be dying within 2 weeks but if the patient is now he has no option left he has no option left for other pathies to cure so if he admits to the hospital it is not that why we have admitted this hospital because this patient will teach the students that what is the tight mitral stenosis because all the symptoms of mitral stenosis whatever written in the book that is not very common in any mitral stenosis patient in very advanced stage in the last stage it can be seen so he can be he can teach and what is the behavior how that type of serious type of case can be managed that terminal illness patient can be managed uh, with the similimum or with the pathological prescription or whatever may be the technical the skill of the doctors of one senior doctors or one rmos or hmos that is the learning point to the interns house staffs in the final year students so students will get confident whenever he will be observing the patients have been curing in the opds and ipds it is very common in opds we can see the patients are getting benefit from the opds patient are getting benefit from the private clinics but patient are not getting benefit from the institutional ipds it may be one of the most important reason for private colleges may be the fund from economical but i must say apart from the fund the intention the desire whether i am agree whether i am very much ready uh, for the patient's uh, admission to the ipd this is also one very important part so it is not that ipd is not for homeopathy because most of the chronic cases if we have to uh, not only treat we if we have to teach rheumatoid arthritis different pattern the felty syndrome different pattern what is the low graded fever of uh, sle what is the real the difference between the sle and dermatomyositis if we 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 have a uh, we have seen one patient of dermatomyositis in medical college which is very nearby and if that patient is uh, uh, we can invite that the doctors request that that patient may be in our opd we can we can just go for the patient's look the how to because clinical training is very much needed it is not only for medicine it is for organon it is for metra medica and it is for receiving confidence the students are not receiving confidence because 90% is going in the theoretical part the uh, if we say that there is no patient i i will not agree with this because homeopathy the patient we have a ample patient in homeopathy in all the opds in all the private clinics but during regarding admission something is lacking it may be our intention it may be our uh, lack of professionalism uh, or uh, something we have to thought for in the vision 2030 and if you have any question anything 
uh, uh, right now. I will be there uh, for reply. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Professor Chatterjee, for giving different views regarding uh, teachings. One query was there from viewers that what will be the fate of uh, the postgraduate students of gynecology, obstetric surgery and other allied subjects in teaching profession. I think the answer has been given by Professor Chattopadhyay. Now, let us request uh, Dr. Prola Sharma, Medical Superintendent of National Institute of Homeopathy, to focus his views on hospital management, homeopathic hospital management. Dr. Sharma, please. Uh, Professor has left for some reason, maybe due to internet okay. issues, but we will be joining okay. later. Okay, uh, sorry, Dr. Pola Sharma is at this moment is not in the uh, screen. Uh, he will join very soon. So maybe request Professor Bhattacharya to give his views on clinical practice in homeopathy system of medicine. Thank you, Dr. Polani. Good evening to all doctors who are participating in this seminar. So long, I was hearing Dr. Nayak, then Dr. Rajat Chatterjee. Really, their speech was much, much informative. And I think it will inspire the future generation also. The way Dr. Nayak explained, the way Dr. Rajat Chatterjee explained, it was very, very informative. Now, my subject you have given for that. I am thankful to all the organizers of Alumni Association for giving me the scope to speak before all the students or the doctors. Sorry, doctors. The subject has been allocated challenge I have arranged it like this, challenge to be faced for clinical practice in 2030. Because every day when we see our patient, that is our challenge. So what will be in 2030, that is also a challenge for each and every individual physician. Now before coming into it, because it will be uh, similar. So I am going to a question. One of the listener of the line asked me a question regarding my last speech in this occasion. That I told a case of Dr. Jain Mojumdar and myself followed the same. At the age of 17 years, Dr. Jain Mojundar treated her with pulsatilla for a major disease like osteosarcoma of the knee. And by pulsatilla 200, it was cured. Last time I told, the same patient came to me after a long time at the age of 65 years for treatment of skin disease and I prescribed Pulsatilla 200 and the patient improved followed by higher potency the patient was cured. Now some doctor called asked me sir if this is the constitution of the patient whatever disease she will suffer or he will suffer in his life whether the same constitutional medicine is going to cure him or her? My answer was not necessarily, not always. Why? That I want to discuss first because that will help you to understand the problem in 
2030 also. Now, a patient comes to you for the treatment of a disease. We consider him or her with her constitution. And if we find the constitution matches to pulsatilla or sulfur or puja, whatever it may be, we prescribe and we have seen it is cured. Now, what is this constitution? This constitution is not only the physical makeup or mental makeup or some symptoms present in him but also the disease he has acquired now the stages he has passed in his different stages of life and the miasmatic backgrounds present in the patient at present this everything is within this framework of constitution. So when a medicine like pulsatilla, you understand the case, when a medicine was given to her at the age of 17 and she was cured at that time and again he has, she has come with a major disease which could not be cured by usual medicines by after at the age of 65 years, after a so long period she has come. So, what did Pulsatilla? The Pulsatilla did miracle in that case. But it could not change the genotype. The entire disease was cured. But the constitutional, genotype constitution which she got from her parents and where there were certain stigmas due to her different stages of life, those stigmas and the genotype was not cured. But it was cured, so for a long time the patient was free from major disease. Definitely she had suffered from fever, she had suffered from some other acute conditions depending upon the exciting cause and she has been treated and she has been cured by that time. But again at this stage of 65 years, she brought, developed another miasmatic deep acting disease which could not be cured by ordinary symptomatic medicines from homeopathy or allopathy, whatever it may be. So, this is the thing, what I want to tell, that the constitution develops the disease state being faced by different influences, that is phenotype. When she born, it was the genotype. Gradually, a patient is getting different types of influences, different types of stigma from different aspects of life or mode of life, education, service, the stress and strain she is passing, everything, even she is exposed to some miasmatic exposure that affects her and forms a new type of disease in the long run. Definitely, in all cases, it will it may not be cured by the same medicine, constitutional medicine. But mind it, if the patient changes her mental aspects also, we have seen, we know that a pulsatilla patient with the adverse conditions of the life, with heavy pressure from the family turns into sepia in the long run. The, ma the lady who was most affectionate, who was most sympathetic, who was liking sympathy enormously and moody, that patient turns into a sepia-like apathetic patient because of facing the stress and strains of life 
heavy exhausting duty heavy exhausting uh, sexual or physical or familial life is pulsatilla turns into a sepia but when the pulsatilla did not turn into a sepia or any other constitution definitely we should try with pulsatilla also at the very beginning even after a long period of time now to discuss about the challenges to be faced by 2030 let us discuss certain points which are very very important i think i know everybody of you have noticed it but still i will discuss ever increasing vaccines introduced in the mankind is a great challenge of homeopaths you understand in our when i was the student our teachers used to stay uh, teach us regarding myasmatic aspects and mostly there was two things to understand number one psychotic gonorrhea and number two syphilis those are the venereal diseases which used to produce myasmatic aspects in the human race and the first one was the sorry but when we came few years back we came to know a new disease hiv aids not only hiv or aids mind it for hiv they are giving some vaccines very recently we have faced a strong disaster disease covid 19 understand what was the situation and all the world world health organizations indian organizations they worked on it they developed vaccines and these vaccines were approved and given to the en masse to the people and these vaccinations i have noticed i don't know whether you have noticed or not has produced certain changes in the personal lives and the physical constitution of the people i have noticed i'm telling you i have seen many patients who received both the vaccines came yes doctor i had never developed any words in my life but very recently particularly after these two vaccinations i have seen i have noticed that in a single part either in the skull some patient told either in the axilla some patient told and somewhere either small very small blackish what like structures have developed or some red moles like structures have developed i have noticed it so where from it came this is another vaccinosis psychosis what dr barnett told us the vaccinosis psychosis produced by the vaccine in each time it was also a vaccine against virus same vaccinosis psychosis we have noticed now and some patient came with the came with the different types of words in a particular part some patient came and told yes doctor i was never i have never suffered from any palpitation or uh, 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 difficulty of respiration during movement but nowadays i am facing this type of pain or panting during the movement some patient came that with after this vaccinations this stage suddenly we have developed sudden 
metabolic diseases like increase of the blood sugar level i had no history of blood sugar diabetes mellitus in my family in both my sides parental side maternal side but suddenly after this period i had developed this type of diseases so it is one of the most important thing to understand the day is progressing the vaccines are increasing polio vaccines are given it is bringing some complaint even in the child stage have you noticed that after the polio vaccines the children yes it is to be given i am not opposing the vaccine because it is better to suffer from some symptoms rather than dying when covid covid 19 was so extreme so many people died gradually it has come down with the vaccine poliomyelitis now almost has been eradicated it has been eradicated eradicated from our country but these vaccines have introduced some changes in our constitution and as a homeopath it is our duty to tackle those cases to make them free from those symptoms and to check their progress of this vaccination vaccination psychosis this is one challenge you are going to face in 2030 now you have got back a yeah, that is covid 19 tomorrow there may be coming some pox is coming nowadays some other new type of disease may may, may, may come these are the diseases i think don't these are not the naturally origin from the nature these are cultivated produced by the laboratories but when it comes when you take some vaccines against the it, it will give some other vaccinosis psychosis symptom on the constitution second point you are going to face in 2030 that is problems developed due to synthetic and artificial food even now you are facing your patients they are becoming more attractive towards artificial food towards preserved foods towards seasoned foods towards that is uh, uh, new types of different foods this fried things these that everything is coming in the market and your patients are taking those synthetic foods every day we are facing the problems coming in the patients due to this type of adverse type of change type of attraction towards the food from cold drinks chipses fried fruits what not they are adding in it another thing i am telling you in homeopathy we know that camphor and asafoetida they disturb in the process of treatment in homeopathy sometimes antidotes now the people will not ask from you sir what type of food i will take almost all the junk foods now they contain asafoetida to prepare smell the patient does not ask for use of toothpaste to us they came to us we have given some medicine they go back home see in the TV, some new toothpaste has come. Some in the net they find something has come. Some massage, some toothpaste, something, some oil. They are using it. There are campers. There are chemicals. There are different types of things in that. And everything is disturbing our process of treatment. So that is another great challenge 
it is today and i think this type of challenges will be increased in 2030 we will have to be cautious and they are my solution also i will tell one after another after that what can be the solution of it so these are this is the second type of changes in our life has come and these are the challenges waiting for you for 2030. Another most important thing, ever increasing fear, fear psychosis in the human being, gradually it is increasing, it is increasing in different stages of life. You understand the COVID-19 situation, <coughs> the patient does not know whether he will be he is affected, he has been affected or not. Everybody is in fear. A family member is affected, people are taking him to a hospital, kept in a hospital. My one of my relative was like that. He was affected, he was a patient of the renal failure. But he was being managed well by homeopathic medicine. Gradually he was improving. At that time he was affected by fever at that stage and it was diagnosed forcefully that he was suffering from COVID-19 and he was taken to the hospital and admitted. Almost 15 days his family members could not see him. He could not see his family members. No information regarding him to the family members and no information of the patient, of the family members to the patient. A strong fear psychosis developed both in patient and the family members also. So this type of family pressure, this type of fears, if I am affected, what would happen? Am, am I been am I been affected? If I am affected, what is the treatment? There is no treatment. I will die. So a strong fear complex. The same fear complex I am telling you. For example, the fear complex of the Ukrainian people, where both sides are serving rockets on them. From Russian side, even from the Ukrainian side, bomb is coming. They will not, when it will come down, it will not understand from where it has come and for who it has come. But ultimately, the people, they are started suffering and deep fear, deep fear psychosis. Any time there may be one explosion, and I may die. Dying in a disease, dying in a process, it does not produce this fear complex. But this type of coronavirus gave, gave the fear complex. This fighting gave the fear complex. You can remember the great World War Second II, Second Great World War. The same th thing was developed and they are we got a great medicine for our homeopathy for this fear complex, which was applicable that time to treat the patients, to cure the patients, the developed mental fear psychosis, physical diseases developed due to fear, constant fear, constant fear. So that time, Edward Beck introduced the bowel nodules, and out of which Proteus was identified as the genus Epidemicus for that fear psychosis, which was applied and the patients were improved. Similarly, when I found the fear complex yard after the COVID, during the COVID-19, and when there was strong fear complex, and the patients were puzzled and they developed certain types of symptoms of fear complex along with 
the digestive problems. I use proteas in 30 potency, 30 or 32 it is potency, and I got better. So this ever-increasing fear psychosis, who knows what will happen tomorrow? By 2030, there will be so many fear psychosis. The world is moving, world is changing, nothing is stable. And ultimately, there will be a situation, there may be a situation which will produce strong, strong fear psychosis among the patients, where this type of medicine may come. Another thing, maybe it, you, you will have to face during 2030, that is introduced change of thoughts in the people. Introduced. It is not your own what the media is doing. If you are regularly watching the TV, TVs and all these things, it is introducing planfully, cleverly, it is introducing some certain types of pervertedness in your thoughts, in your dress, in your food, in your sexual life, in your family life. This perverted thoughts, planfully it is being introduced in the TV, media, and as a result, you see, there is no nuclear, they are all nuclear family now. No family. Even what is family today? The day is coming. I think by the 2030, it will come. That only husband and wife is a family. Sons, daughters, even are in the, they are from the very beginning with the hostels. Because... This type of selfish thoughts are being introduced by drama, by features, by cinema, by different multimedia. It is being introduced in us. So everywhere there is certain perver pervertedness. It is a challenge of the homeopathic doctors. They will have to face it. They will have to try to understand. And they will, if they understand it properly, they will be able to tackle the cases. So these are the four areas where I understand by 2030, you will have to face challenges. Whatever I have studied, I will give some example in a very short time because my time is limited. Very short time. I will give some examples and uh, for this. I told you for the very fast that small words in different parts of the body. I thought, I initially when the patient came, small words to, in the body, in the different parts, particularly in a particular area, small. So initially from our repertory, I found causticum in the medicine. I tried with causticum. Causticum failed. So it is psychotic. So I tried with antipsychotic medicine like Thuja. Now, I thought, what is a COVID-19 process? The process, any virus or whatever, this maybe we can say disease producing power entering in the body directly going and settling on the chest and producing some psychotic manifestations and producing this. So I found a very similar medicine is antim tart. I prescribed antim tart on first patient. I got the result. It immediately stopped appearance and gradually those words were disappeared. Second patient I tried, third patient I tried, many patients who developed this what like structure during this stage and improved with antim tart 
I press type 200 potency and I got the result. Now I told you that polio virus which was being given is being given for all child and I have noticed one symptoms developing after it is started that is throat cough almost those children who cannot speak infant they are also it is there and it persists up to the growing stage three four five years six years it is pers persisting i have seen a very good medicine in it where not only the throat i have seen they are doing like this after cupping they are doing like this after cupping the children who does not understand anything they cannot tell anything they cannot express anything by seeing these touch movements i have prescribed hydrolarca in 30 potency and i got result then i have seen i find hydrolarca in many cases where i have given just throat cough the sound of throat cough your ear will say a patient is coming coughing and it is a throat cough and when you see a child and he has been definitely vaccinated given the vaccine for your vaccine and it has developed and there is the involvement of the ER, we are prescribing hydrolactation. Calcarea salp and tuber purinum comes after that. Sometimes hydrolacta itself cures it, sometimes calcarea salp, tuber purinum like medicines are coming and curing. Now, I have told you the synthetic food, artificial food. Another thing I did not mention that time, now I am telling. Nowadays, I have observed two, three things amongst the young generations. Very common, it was not common earlier. 15 years, 20 years back, I did not see such cases very frequently. But nowadays, I find this type of cases very frequently. Gynecomastia. A boy aged 13, 14, 16, 17, 18 has come. The parents has come. Yes, doctors, you see. He is everything is normal. Everything is normal. But he has this problem. And I find that there is glandular structure on the both the breasts. Now, why this happens? Why it has become so frequent? Because of the food, you say the fruits you are taking. The vegetables you are taking, the peas you are taking, the meat or this uh, chicken you are taking, not what meat, but chicken you are getting, even meat also. They are taking vegetables which are induced with estrogen. Artificial estrogen is spread on the different food plants at the flowering stage so that the flower is bloomed properly and the fruit is generated synthetic this artificial hormones are spread over it now do you think that it is not coming to our stomach to the fruits because you cannot stay with without food you will have to live with food so it is coming to your stomach and why they are doing, they are also helpless to protect their food they are doing. If it is not protected, their family will starve. If the fruit or food is not there, everybody of us will starve. So in scientific way, they are cultivating. But in the process of scientific way of cultivating, they are using insecticides, 
they are using different fertilizers they are using different hormones and everything is producing some changes in our constitution and produce different types of diseases i have seen that this type of gynecomastia is developed i have noticed it i have studied why i have thought over it and then i came to a conclusion that it is probably due to all this type of food and as it has produced it has been produced by a strongly either two things one it has produced psychotic changes in the constitution if it has produced psychotic changes in the constitution constitution there will be some other symptoms also also will be produced so in those cases i have tried with thuja in different potency and i got together. and next i thought i found that some persons came with a strong symptoms of liver problems liver disease somewhere in the body small not leucoderma but small white spots so on tongue there is certain changes and some ulcerative patches on the tongue though the patient does not feel any pain though the patient does not know there is some ulcer that there is some mapped like tongue or some impressions on the tongue in different places. And I have tried with some liver medicine, particularly Taraksakam has given me very, very important result, particularly in this type of gynecomastia I have treated. Now, I was talking for COVID, if I don't say a particular medicine, I have seen some patients who are coming who suffered from COVID or who has not suffered got the vaccines from for COVID-19. Suddenly developed strong backache and that backache initially definitely the patient goes for some emergency medicines. They are treated. There was x-ray. Some thing was found definitely. And the symptoms of backache sometimes relieved by the medicine but it did not go and gradually and gradually the patient is becoming crippled cannot move cannot stand erect cannot walk erect and there is a strong pain in every movement at the back backache from such viral diseases variolinum is a very good medicine. I have tried with very good with them, 200 potency in such cases and I have got, got relief in many of my patients with this type of treatment in backache which appeared only after this COVID-19 session or some vaccination. Now, regarding fear, I have already told Proteus, another two medicines I want to mention there, which I have found particularly in this COVID-19 situation. Number one is Calcarea Floor, where tremendously developed the financial tension in the patients with development of some physical symptoms. Backache, this, that, some symptoms were there. Body ache, bone pain. But main thing, everything was superseded by a financial crime, fear. Calcarea floor solved those cases. Another thing, fear, nervousness, many cases were cured by lycopodium in this type of cases. Now, last part I have discussed 
was the introduced changes of thoughts, pervertedness. Pervertedness in the family. Pervertedness in the sexual life. This pervertedness I have studied and I found many cases relief was given by sulfur. Addictions, different types of addictions. Now it is it has become a epidemic like of like addiction. Addiction to drinks. Stress, strain, introduced a perverted life from different media, you find and ultimately what happens to a patient, he becomes perverted. Strongly addicted. I have seen sulfur is a very, very important medicine, acted, carcinogen, acted, tarantula. This type of what happens? Party, dancing, music. Now the young generation, they cannot study, they cannot read without giving a ear aid with the music. Cannot do the sums. Cannot study properly without music. He is listening. His legs are dancing and he is reading. He is doing mathematics. He may be genius. I don't say he cannot be genius. He cannot be a, a good student. He will make good result in the examination. I don't disagree. But by this type of life leading he is becoming restless and there will be a problem in his family due to his restlessness in the future and you have got good medicines like carcinogen like tarantula hispanias there are certain medicines sepia that is also another medicine By the media, another thing has been well introduced among certain people. The voluptuous thoughts. He can get pleasure only on voluptuous thought. Because he is seeing everything, every time he is going to the media, seeing the media, there is certain things, there is certain things, and the, 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 he is going to have some certain type of, this type of diseases. Here, I am telling you, on these particulars, voluptuous change of ideas, Thoughts, pleasures. Belladonna in high potency is a very good medicine and acts well. Thank you. Thank you all for giving me the scope to speak before you. If you have got any question, Definitely you can connect with Dr. Dev Naran Korlani. If the questions comes to me, I will try to give you answer. Thank you. Thanks to the organizers. Thank you, Dr. Korlani. Please. Thank you, sir. We are really grateful. We have learned many things from you, not only for the day, but also days to come. Many, many thanks for giving us your valuable time and giving your experiences valuable, very valuable and very, very important experiences. 
Many thanks. Now, may I now request uh, Dr. Ishwar Das to share his views on pharmaceuticals. Dr. Das, please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kalyani, the president of Agrovini Association, Dr. Bidjit Mukherjee, the secretary, my previous speakers, Dr. Chaturbhuj Nayak, Dr. Jajat Chaturbhatiya, Dr. Samir Bhattacharya. After these long discussions on specific uh, subjects and uh, giving, sharing their thoughts and experiences, I am really in a dilemma what to speak now. It's already one hour, 35 minutes we started. And many of you might have been a little exhausted. And, uh, I don't know how many of you are there online. Uh, still, uh, in continuation of my thought process in the last webinar, I would like to share some of some additional points because the topic which uh, you have assigned to me is uh, the role of the the place and role of National Institute of Homeopathy in 2030. National Institute of Homeopathy has been there since ever since 1975. And uh, a quite long time we have gone with the Institute. The Institute have created a lot of evidences on homeopathy, created large number of experts, eminent personalities, very good teachers, it has taken finest students from across India and uh, other countries, trained them. They have all become the staunch followers of homeopathy in different parts of the country. Very honestly, I am one who follows the, the discussions happening in Alumni Association Group 1 as well as in Group 2. I used to enjoy the innovative thoughts and ideas given by the young brains and many of them are excellent, excellent. I take some of those ideas in my teaching assignments. I also share that uh, the alumnus of uh, NIH and their, their, their academic discussions rather than the good morning, good evening, which we share normally are excellent. Keeping that, there is a large number of uh, well-trained homeopaths, very staunch followers of homeopath, very committed homeopaths from NIH. And one of the finest faculties which the country could aspire is there. NIH has got a very, very important role to play in future homeopathy. Now it is 2022. From 17, 1975 to 22 is a long 47 years of journey the NIH has happened. Maybe we can say that uh, the first academic session started in 77 October and now we are in 22. We have 77, that 23 plus 22, 45 years the NIH has been in existence and has been making a lot of pedagogic research, pedagogic uh, commutation and permutations. So NIH is really in a place, position to guide the future homeopathy in India, rather could be in the world. Because of the finest faculty and the finest students, finest hospital, Dr. Pala is a very good clinician. Dr. Uh, uh, our uh, Dr. Uh, uh, the, the aluminous is there to support the director. And the director, it's easy for the director to collect the support from the aluminous 
and put forward new schemes for development of the institute as well as to guide the homeopathy in education sector, research sector, public health sector, as well as in drug development. These are the four cardinal sectors. If you look into any medical system, the four sectors which are important is medical education, medical research, drug development, and patient care services. We have one of the finest hospitals in NIH. It attracts large number of outpatient patients, which are the material for research. And the best, best of the brains in India coming to NIH for study. So this sort of a combination is very rare in any other institution. Dr. Rajat has mentioned some uh, institution in the private sector. They are all doing great thing. But the pivot, the pivot, if you see in homeopathic education, research, drug development, as well as in patient care services, I think NIH has got an important role. When we are thinking of uh, uh, making a strategy for 2030, a bit of historical evidences going back would be always essential. Earlier, the history of medicine was a part of the academic program in MD, but now that is not there. So to those who are not very familiar, I'll say the four major events happened in the history of homeopathy. Ever since 18, that 18, ever since 1810, which homeopathy or the organon of organon was introduced, homeopathy spread across the world. Homeopathy got from Germany to to it to London, from America, Canada, Russia, and almost all continents. Homeopathy, the 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 homeopathic system of medicine has spread across the whole globe on the all the seven continents during the lifetime of Hanuman itself. Before the death of Hanuman, the system which he introduced spread across the globe. That is something which any scientist, any scientist could ever, ever dream of. The huge acceptance homeopathy got across the globe was mainly because of the safety of medicine, simplicity of its usage, and the cost effectiveness. The medical practice in, in at that time, during the time of Hanuman, was very treacherous, very barbaric, very inhuman. Then the people, when they got a, a simple, efficacious, and uh, a human medical system, the spontaneous acceptance of homeopathy happened across the world. So during the lifetime of Hanuman itself, it's, it, has, it has made its footprint in across the globe. Now, because of this, on this spread, there were, we also created a large number of friends. We also created few enemies. In 1911, 1911, 1911, in America, there were 63 homeopathic medical institutions including unique institutions for gynecology, women and child care, pediatrics, all medical colleges, 63 medical colleges were in the U.S. at that point of time, US, U.S. plus Canada, I suppose. That was the first time the Carney Foundation introduced, assigned a job of evaluating the medical education across America and Canada through Alexander Flexner. The report of Alexander Flexner was quite damaging to homeopathy. And in no time, all the institutions of homeopathy had got closed down. So in, by 1920, this was report was in 19, 19, 1911. By 1920, almost all homeopathic institutions in America and Canada closed down. 63 homeopathic institutions went away. The homeopathic education, which was supposed financed by uh, private institutions, private uh, sponsors, they stopped funding homeopathic education, mainly because of the Alexander Flexner report 
and closed down. Why I'm telling is that has got an important relation to homeopathic education even in 2020, 2022. Dr. Chaturbhuj Nayak was telling one of the scientific articles which came very recently, which is quite damaging, though it was based on wrong assumptions and uh, wrong hypothesis. But the mainstream people doesn't read the, between, the, the facts between, in, in between lines and in between words. This article is bound to get large number of publicity because there are people who are having vested interest in, 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 in denigrating or uh, in bringing bad name to homeopathy. They are, there are a group of people waiting to get such articles to be highlighted in future homeopathy. Even in, 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 the, in, in the department of Ayush itself, we are not very comfortable because there is no much voice for homeopathy even in government of India. The tragedy, this is a tragedy happening for now. Now this happened in 1911, Alexander Flexner report came and all, all American institutions got closed down. And one of the finest institutions in the history of medicine was Royal London Homeopathic Medical College and their degrees F, MF, FF, FF and DF. It was one of the institutes happening in Europe, coming back from uh, America to Europe. In 1995, the Science and Technology Report by the, of the Parliament of Common, the, the Parliament of U, UK has conducted a study and the, tech, the report is known as Science and Technology Report. It is all in the public domain. Anybody interested could read this. Based on the report that uh, there is no much evidence on homeopathy, the public funding which was there in UK for homeopathy in the five homeopathic hospitals, Glaxo Homeopathic Medical College, Homeopathic Hospital, Royal London Homeopathic Hospitals, and there were five homeopathic hospitals. And homeopathy was a part of the National Health System, National NHS, National Health Services in UK. Based on this, progressively, the funding to these institutions have been stopped. And even the, the last one, the Royal London Homeopathic Hospital, was converted to Royal London Complementary Hospital. Homeopathy has gone back. Homeopathy is not there much now. This happened in 1995 through the Science and Technology Report. Third comes the, 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 the FDA. In early 2000, the Food and Drug Administration in US. Now in US, Almost all homeopathic medicines were OTC products. Anybody could go and purchase homeopathic products from there. And homeopathic, homeopathic market was going about 20% annually. The homeopathic market in US was supposed to be about 20%. In, 19, 9, 19, in 2000, the FDA revisited the drug regulation in homeopathy and they started prescribing regulatory mechanism for manufacturing and sale of every homeopathic medicine. And you know, homeopathic market for re-registration of every product, it involves a lot of money and many of the pharmaceutical company may not be able to provide that much of money to get their medicine re-registered. This is the greatest drawback happened in US. Now, based on these two reports, the Australian government also conducted a study and fictitious report were produced showing that homeopathic medicines are not effective anything. So the government should not fund. Net, net, the five reports, the Alexander Flexner report, the Science and Technology report of UK, the FDA studies and the Australian report. These four reports are in front of. Why I quote this report is there is a lot of relevance. We have to learn from the experience. History gives us a lot of information to get information on our future strategies. Tragically, tragically, what happened in homeopathic research across, especially in India, because there's the only country where public fund is happening, as well as abroad, so far, we have been making a lot of clinical research, a lot of clinical research, a lot of tens and tens of clinical evidences are there supporting homeopathic medicines. 
but two things any clinical evidences without substantial fundamental support without without support of fundamental research see basically there are two types of research one is applied research and another is a fundamental research any applied research without having a substantial support from the fundamental research is bound to be bound to face challenges that is exactly what is happening here homeopathic research without support of fundamental research you create any number of evidences clinical evidences even arsenic or anything the simple question anybody is going to ask is what is there in arsenic 30 we are not in a position to explain what is there in arsenic 30 if we say the philosophical concepts of arsenic 30 the modern scientists are not going to believe it it is fundamental fact so we have to get involved in huge research on fundamental basis of homeopathy and drug dynamization the the drug dynamization process the drug proving process the human genomics the individualization all these fundamental basis we have to create how homeopaths are selecting a medicine why it is being selected as dr patanjali has told see variolinum might be a good medicine for backache variol backache due to a covid like situation maybe proteus for fear maybe other thing these are all clinically i 100% appreciate these are possible these are good evidences but unless it is supported by what is there in homeopathic medicine these are going to be challenged even now it will be challenged and tomorrow also it is going to be challenged and how to get this fundamental research in homeopathy we have to involve all the basic scientists into that the homeopaths have to open their door for the fundament for the basic scientists to investigate the homeopathic principles there are seven principles what are what are the principles which are researchable through the basic science need to be need to be investigated by the basic scientists homeopaths you and i cannot do much because our knowledge on fundamental science are very limited so we have to get involved NIH has got an important role in that. Not only in research, in academic programs, the NIH should invite the best of the brains in, in, in IIMs, in IISC, to facilitate their students to understand the basic science, basic research. They should bring the best faculties, not from the homeopathic sector alone, they should bring the best of the brains in science from the best of the brains of in the best of the brain institute best of the institutes like IAS, iam ia in the institute of technology they should expose these sort of research faculties or good faculties to the students of homeopathy in nis the nis students are the best of the brains in india they came they are to the institute with the uh, with the best scientific background from the very beginning itself they should be encouraged to have a different thinking process in, in the scientific aspects of homeopathy. That is one. Second, as on now, we classify all the medical systems available in the world. We can group them into two. One is biomedicine and another is a holistic medicine. Homeopathy is holistic. We know it's uh, we believe in holistic concepts. It is there. The biomedicine believes that biological causes are the, are the are reasons for diseases. <clears throat> and they introduce biologically active or pharmacologically active substances to treat the diseases. So all their evidences are based on experimental evidences. The same thing may not be possible in homeopathy. We have to go with evidence-based medicine, evidence-based experiments. So the research aspects in homeopathy as well as in biomedicine, the holistic medicine and biomedicine are going to be different. This sort of a, a understanding is very much essential. We have to start homeopathic research. If we adopt the biomedical models for homeopathic research, we may not get the substantial evidences. That is exactly what is happening here. We have been putting all of our energy in convincing others rather than creating confidence in homeopathy. That is the fallacy which is happening in homeopathic research in as far as, as on now we are very enthusiastic in, cre in, in, in creating evidences to convince others they are not going to believe anywhere now
as on as the fact remains like that we are always trying our homeopathic research has been mostly directed in creating a, a situation to convince others maybe that may be essential but at the same time we have to create evidences for convincing our students and our faculty then only our system will grow so we have to take this stand and we have to develop our own technology in research models research models we have to evolve a research model based on our concepts and our principles this is what is essential suppose we are aiming for here homeopathy in 2030 i will take I'll not take much i will take another 5 minutes only because i got uh, started late but i don't want to retain you long if you want to create we want to create nih as the nodal center for homeopathy in 2030 we have to create a vision more vision statement i in the last class last lecture itself i told we have to create a vision on what homeopathy what nih is going to create in in academics what nih is going to do in fundamental research or applied research what homeopathy is going to do in in, in drug development and how homeopathy is going to do in patient care services and they should also make efforts to see that they establish regional institutes across country in all the state they should establish a subordinate or 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 sub, sub centers regional centers in across across all the state all the state all the 23 states they should establish states uh, like uh, centers of excellence all the it's supposed to see from my experience and uh, i am telling i was a product of nis i was the director of nis i have seen homeopathy from within i was seen homeopathy from outside large number of interactions happened so i am telling very honestly i am telling in nis has got a major major role and it has got potential it is not that we are trying to thrust something on nis nis has got that potential nis should come out out of that uh, that uh, a feeling that they are one among the, the the 246 institutes in country we should first of all feel that nih is the is, is the nodal center it should become an institute of national importance the highest recognition for any academic institution in india is 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 to get the label of institute of national importance in under the national importance they can be sub centers regional centers or centers of excellence for in every state and then these centers should evolve the research models for homeopathy patient care services in different systems of medicine like the national homeopathy research institute in mental health they are doing mental health we can have one in 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 mother and child care centers we can have one in skin care we can have in personalized medicine we can have in in complementary support therapy for oncology so each of these state centers should focus more on the research and also to provide specific to specific academic training for the postgraduate students so if on a pyramidal basis we have to evolve this institute with the national institute of homeopathy to become the global center or national institute of national not in national important this is the one thing which we should we should put our target for 2030 and based on this concept evolve a strategy a concept paper for that we have to evolve a concept paper on how the nih should be by 2030 on homeopathy and if this concept paper can be created in consultation with experts in different branches and submit to the ministry through the approval with the approval of the the scientific advisory committee of nih we are all there to support the director and because our only ray of hope in homeopathy for in 2030 will be the nih we, sh we should also keep the, the 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 facts that there are experiences like flexner report science and technology report australian commission report fda report and more violent more rigorous oppositions may come in india also so we have to face that challenge and be prepared for that we should not cry after a flood has come we should see how best we can prevent that flood by creating fundamental evidences on homeopathy as well as clinical evidences and also to create core core strength of the system homeopathy has enormous clinical strength in different different different
clinical areas. Enormous. Not one, two, three. There are enormous. If at all homeopathy is popular mainly because the, the, the medical system is having its own strength. But there are a lot of limitations in other medical systems which homeopathy can tackle much better. There are a lot of limitations in other medical system which homeopathy is able to tackle it. That is one of the greatest envious points for many other critics. We should use this as a strength and develop more and more evidences on those areas where homeopathy has strength in comparison to other medical system. Friends, it is uh, high time. There are a lot of things which I want to share, but limitation of time, I don't want to retain you for long. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. I appreciate the best efforts put by, by all my predecessor speakers. And I am always there with you every any time and every time. Thank you so much. Dr. Kalyani, once again, thank you very much for inviting me to this session. Sir, we, we don't have any, any voice to pay you thanks. We are really grateful. We are really obliged to you. You are one of the best uh, viewers of the Nasirista Homeopathy. The best things we see in NIT is your brainchild and including the CME. You are the pioneers among us. We all together went to the ministry to start this CME. We are really very much thankful. And it is our earnest request from all the alumni. You please give us, share us your experience and visions. We will try our level best to uh, to send this to director and higher authorities that will immensely help homeopathy system of medicine. So really we are grateful sir. Please come and encourage us. Thank you. As per your convenient time. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever Thank you. you have given us is a brilliant experience and data. We must be very careful, very sincere to keep homeopathy alive and going forward. Thank you sir. Now it is time is little bit over. Dr. Prola Sharma, please, please, please pay your please experience. Pay your experience uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Kalani, sir. I believe that I am audible and visible. And uh, we are uh, over by two hours. We, are, we have been discussing for last two hours. And many of us might be exhausted by this time. Still, we have with us today, we were listening for a long time from our respected uh, teachers, the legendary of homeopathy. Uh, we have been listening to Dr. Chatir Bhuja Nayak. Uh, we have been listening to Dr. Bhattacharya. We have been listening to Dr. Rajat Chatterjee. Uh, we have been listening to Dr. Ishwara Das. And uh, it was a feeling that uh, we are still in the class and uh, still we are student. It was a wonderful evening today. And I have been given responsibility to talk about how to uh, strengthen the hospital, which means the how to strengthen the uh, outpatient department as well as uh, inpatient department. My uh, concept of delivering my speech is will be out of my experience and my speech will not be restricted to the discussion of national institute of homeopathy it will be a discussion uh, for the development of the homeopathic institution of the whole whole country uh, first of all uh, what i would like to focus on that an institute, a hospital, hospital is the fountainhead of an organization. The reputation of an organization depends on the hospital section. The student gets more attraction to get admitted in the course by seeing a hospital, by seeing the footfalls of the patient. And that is why the hospital to hospital, institute to institute differs. And as it is a fountainhead, the institute, the organization, the hospital should have a person who has a good managerial power. 
uh, you, we can find that the organizational head, uh, he can be a good acad academician, he can be a good researcher, he can be a good clinician. But if someone does not have the managerial power to control whole of the scenario for the better patient care, then the target, the achievement fails. Uh, we believe that and we understand that and in neither of the course, neither in undergraduate nor in postgraduate, a little bit of managerial greed, managerial power, managerial training has been given in the course curriculum. What happens when a doctor is being placed in, as a head of the organization, head of the hospital section, many times and very often, unknowingly, unknowingly they have to compromise with the quality of the patient care. That is a bad part. And to get a developed hospital, a strengthened hospital, we need a good person, good managerial person who has a missionary and visionary should be placed at the right place. Unless we have a good managerial power, unless we do have a good managerial skill, an institute cannot develop, a hospital cannot develop. Uh, next point to discuss about the how to strain the hospital section is the power of expandability and flexibility of the hospital. Because we all know that in the health sector, there are many of emerging issues emerging issues from the environment and emerging issue from the changes of disease pattern emerging issues from the expectation of the patient and by understanding the emerging issues the hospital should have the capacity for expandability as well as flexibility what i mean to say the hospital should have the power of expandability I mean for extension. If there is no extension of the hospital, the hospital cannot survive. It will decline. So there should be always a expandability and flexibility. By flexibility means that we can shift our department from one place to another place. We can shift a department physiology department, a physiotherapy department, we can shift to a eye department. That flexibility one should have. If there is prevalence of dengue in Kolkata, we should have some another word of the dengue word. We should have the expandability. If this, during the COVID scenario, there might have been a COVID hospital with the expandability of the hospital. Unless you have a expandability and flexibility, the society will not understand you. There will be no spread of the name of the institution unless we do have this expandability and flexibility of the hospital. Next point to discuss is the financial management. Unless you have financial support, the hospital cannot be a good one. The hospital division head, organizational head, has to understand the what will be the expense of the hospital in next five months, next one year. They have to make a budget, proper budgeting. To run a good hospital is very, very essential. And they may have some advisory committee of the finance, like in our institution, we do have a standing finance committee. One has to place, the hospital section has to place his target of expenses within six months, for six months or for one year. That has to be passed. And if there is fund constraint, the hospital head has to think from where the fund will come. 
in government sector the government helps in the private sector the institution head the hospital head has to think from where to generate the fund unless you have fund you cannot proceed ahead that is a issue in the in our system in in whole of the system of the patient care system so this financial management team has to be very organized one and a very strong one next point to say is the inventory control every hospital should have a very disciplined organized inventory control means what if you need a spig bomb anemeter today if you ask someone to give provide if the spig bomb anemeter comes after after 15 days it's not going to help the right thing at the right place at the right time is the basic of of quality improvement in connection with the patient care service that is very important one and to make this inventory control there should be a department called as maintenance section there are many maintenance including the biomedical waste product disposal management including the air condition air including the lift in including the pollution control including the pest control there are many uh, maintenance which has to be looked after by the maintenance department a well established well st established strong maintenance department can only uplift the standard of the hospital this is equally applicable for national institute of homeopathy too it is also applicable to the hospital across the country unless you have a finance unless you have a good organized inventory control you cannot go ahead so that that is a very important part of discussion the next point to discussion is the investigation facility this is very important to make the disease diagnosis we all understand that clinically too we can make up uh, a diagnosis which has been called as a provisional diagnosis after the provisional diagnosis we might need to do a certain investigation basic minimum investigation like imaging services like hem hematology like biochemistry some basic important investigation has to be there next po uh, point of discussion is the which is very important one for a homeopathy hospital for institute like our institute that we should have a room a cubicle for observation of the patient we should have a observational room like that of your triage room though triage term is differently used still if we call that triage room as a observation room in respect with the homeopathy treatment it will be good good terminology because homeopathy to treat the emergency cases in in homeopathy uh sometime becomes very uh, very uh, difficult so we may not term the term as emergency in homeopathy hospital we may not term it is a triage one but we can use a term called as observation room the observation room should be well equipped with certain a supportive system and the investigation centers will be nearby to the observation room this is important because that in a hospital the diseases what we treat in homeopathy the chronic diseases mostly that does have a acute exacerbation during the exacerbation period exacerbation period if we refer the case to other hospital we are going to lose something we have to give our best effort to revive the patient to restore the patient with our system maybe with some supportive supportive maneuver 
So one room in each and every hospital across the country should have. And the patient has to be treated there on priority. Soon uh, from, the, from the beginning, from the registration counter, the staff, even the security staff, even the conservancy staff, even the registration staff, they have to be well trained to understand the acute exacerbation of the disease, what we do in fact. From there, the patient has to be picked up by a wheelchair or, or, or some supportive vehicles to the observation room. We have to give priority to the patient because patient do not know that in homeopathy that a emergency cannot be treated. We understand that there are limitation in homeopathy to treat our emergency cases. We may not treat a case of cerebrovascular accident. I'm not talking about the post cerebrovascular accident. Right now it has happened. We may not treat a case of burn. We may not treat a case of road traffic accident. We may not treat a, CB, uh, a case of severe dehydration in pediatrics, but we can treat certain cases of epilepsy which has to be prioritized. We can treat the status asthmaticus, which, which has to be prioritized. And for that reason, each and every hospital of the country should have observation room, what we are lacking today. The much importance has to be given there if we really want to improve our system because the chronic diseases does have a acute manifestation we have to take care a patient for last three years have been have been treated at a center in a hospital certainly in acute exacerbation if you refer the case we are losing something we are giving a bad message to the society that homeopathy cannot control an emergency there can be restriction, but there are many diseases in emergency. We can treat it. Uh, for that reason, we need an observation room. Next point to discuss is the skill management. In a hospital, we have a clinical staff. We have security staff. We have a conservancy staff. We have a nursing staff. We have a clerical staff. We have interns, we have postgraduate trainees. We do have a faculty members, both from medical faculty as well as teaching faculty. The skill development, there should be a continuous skill development uh, endeavor. The skill development, by skill development, we can find out, find out our error. We can find out our vulnerable places and we can do a gap analysis. And we adopt the uh, we adopt a corrective action and preventive action. That is why we say that small act, big changes. A very small act can make a big changes for the development of the hospital. There should be a constant monitoring, a continuous quality improvement monitoring in the hospital. I believe that a hospital head, the organizational head, has to find out, has to make the vulnerable places with his leadership. The visionary, what Dr. SK Bhattacharya has seen last 15 years back, 20 years back, we are getting today. The result is coming today. The visionary of what Dr. Ishradash has seen in our institution, the result is coming today. It's a long time fixed deposit like action. Today we'll invest the thought. The result will come after five years, 10 years, 15 years. The thought 
what our present director is seeing the result will come after five years 10 years 15 years the visionary is a very important one and by visionary we develop our visionary by doing the gap analysis by doing the gap analysis we adopt of corrective measure action and the preventive action by by visionary we see the future in one part we will be very we have to have our vision and mission in another hand we have to make the the endeavor for the skill development dr chatobadai was saying every teacher has said training to the internees very important issue what we are facing today because of this two years gap hybrid classes i believe that the present postgraduate training present internees they need more attention more and more attention they has to be said that one has to focus on the disease diagnosis at first the generality is, is important for the treatment procedure the tongue thus sweat desire aversion but the priority priority should be on disease diagnosis it will by doing a disease diagnosis it improve the skill of the of the internists and pgts and also it gives the prescription the right prescription behavior gives a importance in the society that is very important one the by doing a skill development by training by giving a training to the internists and pgt because the internists and pgts are the first person to interact with the patient the whole of the development of a institution depends on how the internees how the pgts are behaving with the patient what skill they have they have shown for the recovery of the disease in the particular patient that is very important one controlling standardizing the profession is only possible by giving the skill management skill management training for appropriate behavior for appropriate prescription to give the right medicine to the right person at the right moment is a very important one in the discussion of the skill management there are many points to discuss for the development of the hospital but i believe that because of the time constraint uh, i might have to leave out here a uh, discussion today and uh, lastly what I, i would like to say is that whoever working in their field in the hospital if they dedicate their time for the patient care if they focus on continuous quality improvement for the healthcare system if they work with the love and affection for the betterment of the institute as well as the, for the patient care the institute will improve the system will improve with this a uh, few words i take your permission to leave uh, thank you so much for patient hearing uh handing over the microphone to dr kallani sir thank you so much thank you prolog thank you for your time for your <coughs> valuable experience uh it is already late that's why we could not continue the question and answer session so whoever viewers and listeners you are having questions please send to us in whatsapp we will try to reply later on uh, vidut can you end the program now
it is already 10:30 Yes, okay sir, the time is almost over we uh, tonight we had uh, declared from 8 to 12 uh, 10:30 we are dot on time 1 minutes left and it had been an outstanding discussion through and through lot of things to ponder upon uh, our groups uh, whatsapp group and telegram group are being flooded with lot of uh, pondering views as uh, the doctor uh, professor ashwara das sir had been telling so we request as kalyani sir had said uh, we request all the alumni across the globe to uh, share your views be a speaker in the cme our next cme will be on second uh, uh, the date will be declared very soon the second uh, sunday of july so let's so conclude over all here the, all the panelists it's um, there is a ready. question um, ha, come on what no. is the question uh, let's bring uh, all the uh, 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 panelists on the screen or so uh, yes they are taking everyone on screen but uh, first there is a winner um, of the uh, today's quiz so he has, he is being on the back stage from the start so right that's why right. uh, please Yeah, yeah. Please bring him in. Uh, bring him on the screen. Uh, Orko has been conducting uh, from the IT team uh, quiz on the CMEs which had already been there in our YouTube uh, archive. So, uh, on basis of that question, fastest finger first. Uh, there has been a winner today. Uh, tonight is uh, Shoaib. Orko, please bring Shoaib on screen. Uh, Uh, just hold on a minute. Show you if uh, you just can. Just hold on a minute. Just hold on a minute. Show your face if there is no network issue. Uh, please hold on a minute. Some. Just hold on a minute. Um, it will take one or two minutes. Uh, because he just please. messaged me. Wait, wait, sir. Uh, please wait. Uh, once because he just messaged me. Yes, he is here. Okay. Okay. Shreya Bhamit, welcome, Shreya Bhamit, on our fifty-first CME. Hello. And you have My been a Shreya. very I... regular audience. I am the student of Medinapur Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital, and I am the second year medical student. Too much of network issue, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, congrats, congrats to Swayam. Swayam, congrats. Thank you. I can I kindly, especially thank you, Doctor Bidu Sir, Doctor Maj, and. All of them are speaks. All of his speech is unbelievable. I am so thank you. So thank you. Anyway, good, Doctor Bhutit. All all the best. You have done it very good. And compliments. And compliments. To all. To all. Compliments. Compliments to all. To all. Okay. Okay. Keep it up. Keep it up. So Thank you, sir. Uh, this is something which which Orko and their IT team are doing on the backstage. Uh, they are trying to uh, generate uh, the quest among the homeopaths across the institutions and uh, trying to have that uh, quest so that uh, the students, the alumni of other institutions, can also join live through sure. some. Quiz or some other uh, interactive uh, program. Good, good, good. But you just tell me what is the secret of Dr. Pralay keeping so young? I think uh, he is he, keeping much younger. Much younger. younger. Thank, Thank you, sir. You know, there is a secret can be shared. Share. 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 Definitely, definitely. Most of you. 
Then we keep it up. Thank sir, you so much. Thank you. Sir, no, there, thank there you, sir. we had uh, uh, regarding uh, Ashwarada sir's question, there was a topic I had uh, posted you uh, individually in the chat box that homeopathic cosmetology. <laughs> Prana, yeah. and you could discuss on that in another CME. Yeah, anyway, anyway. yeah we'll do it. The we'll secret do. of Prana's uh, youthfulness. Yeah, yeah. The role of homeopathic hospitals. Yes, that's a good topic. You can good you topic. can share it with all homeopathic colleges. Cosmetology. cosmetology. Yeah, cosmetology is also there. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, thank good you, night. Sir. It's a good time to good. say goodbye to everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll take it. I'll thank take you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Very, 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 very. And we are returning back, back to our backstage editor. Orko, Orko. Uh, thank you all. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's uh, CME. And sadly, due to the internet connection, uh, the winner of today's uh, CA was, uh, quiz was unable to join. And you know, this internet connections are very much uh, tremendously troublesome. But also, we are trying to do our best. And thanks to all those who are supporting us, uh, supporting our IT team for doing our work. Yes, we are trying to do our best. We are failing in some cases, but we are trying our best to do. So we, we are thinking of some new perspective uh, of having a feedback form uh, about the IT team and other changes, uh, which can be done to, uh, means which you want to suggest to our IT team that it will be best for us to do about that. So. Also, the quiz, let me just tell you a brief about the quiz. So basically, you have all you have to do is just join the Telegram channel. Link is in the description. And join the common discussion group. A question set will be given to you. And a new group link means a common discussion group link will be sent to you on that channel, on the Telegram channel. Join over there. And on every CME days uh, from 6 p.m., there will be a quiz in which the top two uh, uh, audiences, top two winners get the chance to be on the backstage, like Shoaib Ahmed. Today's winner was Shoaib Ahmed and uh, Kaz, uh, Dr. Kazi Fazle Haq. So, uh, like them, you can also do it. And we are, we are also trying to do the quiz on the alumni group on Telegram channel. You can be there to all the alumni sirs and ma'ams who are currently watching this video as a, in a video format or in a live format. Your group uh, on the Telegram, just join your Telegram group, the alumni tele uh, Telegram group. There will be a quiz too at the same time. And on that time, you will be getting the quiz part and you have to just pass this finger first, as said. You have to just be fast. It will start from 6 p.m. and will go on about three questions. And for that, we have to check all the CMEs in our channel, like the summary, the topic, subtopic, and the speaker's name, and the number of CME, and also a minute details on description and the heading part. So this is the main thing. And with this, uh, it's time to say good night. And for uh, it's now time for post CME talks. Goodbye. See you in our next CME, which will be on 10th of July, 2022. Until then, this is me, Orko Mukherjee, leaving.